I work in an area that is not as steep as San Diego County is. It's, uh, we plant avocados in uh, much more uh, uh, refined conditions in Ventura and in Santa Barbara and San Luis Obispo counties. Uh, but we've all been hit by heat waves. Uh, this has affected not just our tree crops, but also the natural wildlife settings. Um, in the last several months, we've seen damage to Brazilian pepper and eucalyptus and pine trees and oh gosh, the redwood trees are, are suffering. So I've been looking into <clears throat> ways of reducing, mitigating heat damage to, to avocados, but it's also affecting uh, some of these techniques affect uh, citrus as well. Um, and so cover crops are part of this discussion and hedgerows and, and windbreaks um, because of their contribution to the humidity and the evaporative cooling that, that can go on in an orchard. So, I'm, uh, and some of the techniques that we're starting to use to reduce the impact of heat on avocados, make it more possible to, to grow and justify the use of expensive water in avocado orchards on steep hillsides. So I'm gonna go through a pretty rapid discussion of some of these um, techniques that we've been looking at and promoting and some of the, 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 the uh, information that can back up some of the choices that we're gonna be making. So um, Southern California, we're dealing with some real problems with soil pH. Uh, tends to be kind of low in San Diego, but as you go north above Los Angeles, we're dealing with some high pH soils, a lot of limestone north of Los Angeles, low organic matter and carbon levels. Um, we we full, run the full gamut of sandy soils to heavy clay soils. The thing that makes agriculture possible in Southern California is the weather. We have this climate that allows us to do things that you can't do and Minnesota and New York and you know Kansas and you know even places like Arizona. Um, so the climate is really exceptional uh, here, and we're dealing with high water prices, poor water quality, bad soils, uh, labor shortages, and all sorts of other things that limit agriculture. But at least we've got the climate. So we've got waters and soils that have high salts. Um, water availability, and then we're dealing with this climate change issue of high temperatures that have been, you know, boiling in the last two summers, but, you know, pop up in, in the wintertime, in the springtime, when, golly, we're not supposed to be dealing with this in, in paradise, but we, we're, uh, we're having to can, contend with it. Um, so high temperature variability and this, these Santa Anas that blow through. Um, the impacts. Uh, this is, I'm using avocados in, as the exemplar here, but um, it, it, it applies for just about anything that is fruit uh, producing. So the heat that comes in causes um, flowers to abort, it causes fruit drop, it reduces fruit size, um, uh, it reduces um, yield, total yield, uh, you know, some real problems um, in, in just plant health and productivity. Um, and, you know, the soils heat up and that can lead to root death. So I'm having problems moving through. Uh, <clears throat> so how do you prevent heat damage? Well, you change the environment. Um, we, we have ways of doing that, mainly through the use of water. Um, there are some things like kale and clay that help reflect light, we call protectants. And then just a healthier tree can, can lead to better um, ability to sustain heat stress. Um, so how do we manipulate the environment? Um, we do this through uh, water principally or water contribution. And so we, when we think of water, we're, we often think of, you know, just the irrigation system. but you know, under, under canopy irrigation, you know, the way we normally irrigate and, you know, leading into a heat spell, we want to make sure that we've got water onto the crop. Uh, you want to have a hydrated plant before the heat spell arrives because once heat, um, 
once the plant is having to deal with heat, it, oftentimes it'll shut down its stomata. And it's the stomata that are transpiring that are releasing water that cool the plant. You have to have a fully transpiring plant. And uh, one of the first reactions to stress on the part of a plant, heat stress, uh, is to start shutting down. Um, and that leads to sunburn and sun damage. Anyway, so we're looking at um, overhead sprinkling systems now, um, how mulch can be used to reduce uh, temperatures in an orchard, windbreaks, um, intercropping, and, and cover crops. You know, uh, because of high costs of water availability, um, you know, the weediness of some cover crops, uh, we've often overlooked using cover crops in the summertime. But this may be one of our uh, tools that we use now in order to combat heat in, in, in orchards. So one of the most important ways that we deal with is overhead misting systems. And um, this has been used in Australia now for many years. Um, in California, overhead solid set systems were installed in orchards back in the 50s. Um, and they went out of favor when low pressure irrigation micro sprinklers came into use. Um, but they were installed primarily for frost control, uh, overhead sprinklers uh, by putting out water during a cold spell can improve uh, frost tolerance. But now we're starting to look at these as uh, putting water out to create evaporative cooling that can improve uh, heat tolerance in trees. Um, we've looked at different sprinkler sizes. Uh, we know that um, getting good coverage is important. Um, we, we need these sprinklers to clear the vegetation. So these sprinklers need to be quite a bit above the, the canopy in order for them to, to best perform. Um, they need to be turned on at the right time. Uh, typically now they're, they're, they're uh, uh, we have some of these systems designed so that they'll turn on at a certain temperature and with a forecast of, of higher temperatures. Um, uh, one of the problems is that uh, these systems often require large volumes of water um, such that you might need to have a reservoir um, to supply the system uh, throughout the heat spell or have access to district water that can supply water throughout the heat spell. Um, uh, so these orchard heaters, or excuse me, these orchard cooling systems can reduce temperatures as much as nine to 15 degrees Fahrenheit, depending on wind speed and the volume of um, water that's put out. So here's an example of a system that's been used in, in, um, in Australia. Um, these are overhead sprinklers uh, there's a sprinkler at every tree. Um, uh, and the cost of these systems are, are not that great. They, they typically are running in the range of $1,000 to $1,500 per acre. And, you know, if you figure that they're going to last at least 10 years, uh, the amortization rate it makes them so that they are relatively inexpensive. Um, and, and especially inexpensive compared to the value of the crop that you're protecting. You know, you're looking at Fifteen to twenty thousand dollars worth of fruit out there, and so you know, one hundred and fifty dollars worth of sprinkler system is not all that expensive. Um, here's an example of um, sprinklers that it, were run during a heat spell, and uh, you can see the temperature ranges that are occurring, um, uh, and uh, the, the need to. To, to keep these systems running for a certain period of time. Okay, mulch itself can also um, help reduce temperatures. You know, this is so, um, reducing the solar radiation that hits the soil. Um, so it's going to reduce temperature rise. Um, it also is going to improve the soil biology. And, and we're looking at materials that are kind of woody that are persistent. Um, and you can see that, you know, putting down, this is a, in a lemon orchard, you know, putting down a mulch is, is protecting the soil. It's preventing it, uh, evaporative loss. So mulches do two things. They 
they reduce evaporative loss, but they also re actually reduce temperature by reducing solar radiation that reaches the, the soil. And um, on flat ground, it's fairly easy to put mulch out. Uh, when you're dealing with avocados, you know, it can get kind of expensive going up on slopes. But um, if you're using a woodier mulch as this is, uh, you know, these mulches can persist for one to three years. And oftentimes, you know, avocados are self-mulching and they'll start putting out their own mulch to, to protect the ground and reduce temperatures. Um, so part of the deal is of reducing this incident radiation on soils is that, you know, either with a cover crop or with mulches is that it reduces soil temperatures, uh, which in turn reduces the air temperatures. Um, and in reducing soil temperatures, uh, it, it, it prevents um, the soil heating up and killing roots, which can lead to, you know, plant health issues, you know, and, and you know, this can be a problem when you're in a, an area that's prone to frost, you know, both mulches and cover crops reduce temperatures in heat periods, but they also reduce temperatures in cold periods so that they can accentuate frost damage. Um, we're seeing fewer days of frost. Uh, it was not unusual in Ventura in the Santa Paula area to have 15 days uh, when the smudge pots and uh, wind machines were running. And now we rarely run much more than three to five days, uh, three to five nights. So climate change is real. Um, one of the impacts of temperature is that it reduces pollen viability. So in turn, it's going to reduce uh, crop yield. So we really do need to start looking more closely at how we manage temperatures in, in, in orchards. Um, Inter-row cropping, you know, uh, you can grow something to sell. Um, in some cases, people are growing hay, uh, a, a spring crop. I've seen people growing sweet peas that they harvest. Um, so. Uh, you can be creative in, in these cover crops that you plant. Hedgerows are very similar in, in uh, we're seeing a lot of hedgerows that have been removed in, over the years, but uh, so many people are putting them back in because they in turn do contribute evaporative cooling to an orchard, um, which is important. So here's an example of intercropping where sweet peas were used as a cover crop and, you know, they're using mulch at the same time. Um, uh, we've been looking at uh, gardens, cover cropping used as pollination gardens as well. Um, this is to improve fruit set in, in avocados and, you know, you're, you're getting this temperature effect as well. Um, so we we have not looked so closely at uh, kaolin as a protectant. Much more work has been done in the Central Valley using it on on stone fruits and uh, and it can be very significant um, at, at improving tree uh, resistance to to heat and and sunburn. Um, but just pruning trees and reducing them and, and whitewashing. Uh, is going to reduce water use in an orchard and improve survivability of trees in a heat spell. A healthy tree is going to be better able to resist uh, the stresses and a healthy root system. And so uh, a lot of orchards um, are, are more damaged by not just heat, but also frost damage by, by poor nutrition. So, you know, keeping a healthy orchard is always going to be better able to resist uh, heat spells. So in summary, protecting avocados from heat events uh, starts with optimum tree health and, and laying the orchard out and laying out a, a good irrigation system that is maintained and uh, is evaluated on a frequent basis so that um, it puts out a, uh, uh, the amount of water that's expected by the grower. Um, using 
an irrigation system strategically, irrigating prior to a heat spell, hydrating the tree and then irrigating through the heat spell is effective, but overhead um, misting systems are very effective. Um, mulching tree berms, um, using cover cropping and using protectants like kaolin are all very helpful in um, reducing heat stress in orchards. So with that, I am going to turn it over to the next speaker.